Chapter 4 looks at number theory and cryptography. Before we get into that, first we're going to look at divisibility and modular algorithm. So we need modular algorithm to do some cryptography. So in this section, we're going to first see the division, then look at division algorithm, finally modular algorithm. So here's the definition of division. If A and B are integers with A is not equal to 0, then A divides B if there exists an integer C such that B equals AC. So in another way of saying is, you have A divide B. So here we have this notation. This vertical line is the divide notation and A divides B, that's how you read it, meaning A divides B. So if you were to write it in your math class, that's how you write it, A divides B. If and only if there exists a C such that AC equal B, where A, B is the element of the integers and C is the element of positive integers. So this capital letter Z means integers and plus sign means positive integers. Here this C means there exists some C. So let's look at the example. Let's say you have 3 divides 15. So I want to see, does this number go in evenly? Does uh, 3 divides B? So, using this definition here, AC equal B. So, it should apply that AC equal B if A divides B. So, I have the constant C, 3 some number c equal 15 so you can solve for c c is equal 5 so here 5 is a positive integer right so c is the element of this positive integer because of that i can say it's true 3 does divide 15 so what about 3 divide 22 so we can use this same formula 3c equal 22 we solve for c we get 22 divided by 3 which is not the element of the positive integers because fractional numbers are not integers because of that this is not the element of positive integers because of that notice I change my sign from this vertical line to not so I can say 3 does not divide 22 so I can say therefore 22 is not divisible by 3 so this right here is something you will have to remember to substitute in a proof later on In here we have some basic properties of divisibility of integers. So we have three of them. So let's look at the first divisibility property. Before we prove it, let's look at the example. So we have a divide b. So let's say we use 3 divides 15 and uh, for a we're going to use 3 and C is 6 because 3 goes into 5 and 6 evenly. Then uh, 3 divides 15 plus 6. So you get 3 divides 21. For these set of integers, 3, 15 and 6, I know it checks out. But I want to see, does it work for all integers? this divisibility property work for all integers. 
So when we want to prove something, we need to look at what do we already know. So we know a divide b, b is equal to a times c for some value c. In my equation, I already have c. So this is going to make things little confusing. So instead of c, I'm going to say b equal ax. This could be any uh, letter you want it to be. Then uh, c equal ay. So later I will show you why I did why did I use this. To start my proof, I'm going to say that there exist two integers x and y such that I know from the definition here, my div divisibility definition, b is equal to ax and c is equal to ay. So I'm going to replace b and c with ax, ay because of this definition here. From the definition of div divisibility. But what do I want to prove? I want to prove a divide b plus c. So this b plus c can be rewritten with the substitution here. b is ax and c is ay. Now I can see what is common here. a is common to this term and this term. So I can take it out. So you left with a x plus y. So this right here a times x plus y is in this format here. a time some value. So some value is x plus y. So this is in the proper format. So this tells me by the definition of divisibility b plus c equals a times x plus y. Therefore, I can say a divides b plus c. So this is a proof for all values that are integers. Let's look at the second property of divisibility, which tells me if a divides b, then a divides b times c for all integers c, where c is positive integers. So if, it, if I try out some values, a equals 3 and b equals 15, then uh, b times c, I'm going to say c is 2, then you know it checks out 3 get divided into 30 evenly. So by looking at it like this, it makes sense, but we want to prove for all integers of a, b and c, this is going to work. To prove this just like before, I'm going to say if a divides b, then b equal ax. So instead of saying c, I'm going to put the letter x just like before because it's a little confusing if I use c again. For some x which is a element of integers. Now I'm going to look at b times c. So b times c, b replaced with ax times c. So with associative property, I know I can regroup this. a x times c. Now this has the format of this right here. Since this is written in the proper format, therefore I can say a divides b c. True is true by the definition of divisibility. So for this third property, we have a divides b and b divides c. 
then a divides c so this is like a transitive transitive property so just to understand let's try an example just like before so 3 divides 6 and 6 divides c then 3 divides 18 so you can see this works this is true since a divide b then based on this definition we can say b equal a x for some x is an element of integers since b divide c then by the definition c is equal as c equals b times y for some y is the element of integers by substitution then we can say c equal a x y and we can reorder them and this have the format we are looking for by uh, divisibility therefore we can say a divide c by the definition of divisibility